Hello, it's the last day of April 2017 and from the news hub here at Adisawe Kandarakra, this is News at 10 with me, Stephen N.T. And let's first start with the major news highlights of the day. Construction of a 500-bed military hospital at Aferi in the Ashanti region may suffer further delay in completion due to an unfavorable taxation regime. Contractors working on the project want governments to revise its new policy mandating all contractors to pay taxes on import duties for later refunds. And the Supreme Court Judge Justice Doche, Jones Doche, has asked trial judges to be resolute, fair and firm in applying all relevant laws to curb the menace of illegal mining activities. He noted the judiciary institution has the right to protect the environment just as they protect the rights of citizens. And President Nane Kufuado has urged members of the Council of State not to be sycophants but to speak the truth. He reminded them that they play a cardinal role in nation building. The Tema Fire Service has identified poor fire safety measures implemented at high-risk installations in the metropolis. The service uncovered this during a simulation exercise to test the preparedness of personnel of the Volta Revo Authority at Boom Thermal Plant. The Baptist Medical Center in the East Mamprusi district is turning away tuberculosis patients following the a breakdown of a multi-radiography system, MRS. The multi-radiography system installed in the 90s to diagnose tuberculosis for treatment is broken down. The Ghana Health Service has reminded all regional directors across the country of the likelihood of cholera outbreaks at the, as the rains set in. The service has asked all regional directors to intensify diarrhea surveillance and make extra efforts to identify the causative agent uh, res uh, responsible through uh, laboratory investigations. So those were our major news highlights. Up next is the big one. Please stay. Welcome. Now, the Bureau of Public Safety has called for the setting up of a proper emergency dispatch center with one well-publicized emergency number. The emergency number for the police service is 191. The fire service emergency contact is 192. In some instances, is 999, whilst that for the ambulance is 193. Executive Director of the Bureau of Public Safety, uh, Nanea Akwada, is joining me via Skype now. Uh, Ms. Akwada, good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, Mr. Kwada, the Bureau of Public of Safety, US. you are calling for the setting up of um, uh, a recognized emergency dispatch center. And of course, you want uh, the number to reach this center to be just one instead of 191, 193, 999, uh, uh, multiple uh, numbers. Uh, why this call? Well, um, I've already said good evening to your viewers. I think it's very important that uh, we, as a nation, gravitate towards um, harmonizing or rerouting all the calls into one, just one single number, set of numbers, one single set of numbers that people could call. Um, gradually, Ghana at 60, we are expecting that we will um, have some jumps and leaps in development. And it's important that people right on top of their head during emergencies remember just one number mm. to call. It helps the emergency process. It makes all the other emergency state agencies also accessible in real time. 
Mm. I, I, Ms. Akola, let's look at how this will work because uh, we know that in Ghana there are various agencies, fire, police, ambulance, and they all already have uh, dispatch centers. Uh, do you not feel that beyond citizens remembering a single emergency number to call, this might uh, come as an, as, as an extra inconvenience for those other emergency centers who already have their emergency numbers? Uh, definitely not. Definitely not, Stephen. If you can run a quick check, uh, possibly tomorrow or the next, try calling uh, the Ghana National Fire Service or the police or other emergency services um, and listen to the urgency in the voice of the dispatchers. And you find out that the dispatchers, most often than not, do not come across as very professional. They do not mm -hmm. um, emanate the kind of urgency that somebody who is distressed would require. Secondly, if you bring all these dispatchers together in one place, it helps you um, concentrate resources and train them appropriately and make them act more professionally. There is no reason why a small country like Ghana should have, um, all, all agencies should have their own dispatch centers, mm -hmm. especially when, um, when emergencies strike. They usually strike and then there are several uh, bodies that you will require at the time. For instance, the other day when um, Malcolm, uh, sorry, um, Dr. Indum's facility was on fire. We did not only have the fire service being on the scene. There were emergency, there were uh, folks from the ambulance service, there was the police and so on. When we have a single dispatch center, a properly resourced dispatch center, the dispatcher is going to get in touch with the police, is going to get in touch with the fire, is going to get in touch with the ambulance service to all, you know, find their feet or mm -hmm. be heading towards this site of emergency as a stance. Either the same person who is distressed will have to call fire service when he finds out that people are, you know, literally stealing from him and his something is his building is on fire, people are still stealing. Then you have to call the police when it is found out that there are people who need, you know, attention, medical attention. Then you have to now call uh, ambulance service, which we think, you know, in times of emergencies where seconds count, seconds determine whether somebody lives or dies. It is important that we have a properly resourced uh, dispatch center which will now be tasked with the uh, responsibility of assembling the uh, required emergency services on any emergency scene. Mm, I know that uh, it, it, might be, it might not be really within your prerogative to make a suggestion, but of all the emergency numbers we have, which one do you think uh, will prove easy to recall and for which, uh, as part of your suggestion, you might want uh, the emergency institutions, relevant emergency response institutions, to consider? Well, I'll tell you what, Stephen. We started a, a survey two years ago. Um, we were brought to a halt as a result of lack of funds, but um, we're trying to test the public knowledge on the emergency numbers. One number that stood out um, as very popular was the 191, which belonged to the police. So mm -hmm. I think that um, if we decide that we want to harmonize all of this, reroute all the calls into one single number, we are looking at uh, 191, which wow. is, uh, you know, very popular among the populace. Right. Uh, Mr. Kora, before you go, we know that April 28th is uh, observed uh, as the World Day for Safety and Health at the workplaces. Let me ask you, do you think Ghana has an occupational safety uh, the, sorry, I beg your pardon. Let me rephrase this question. Does Ghana not have an occupational safety and health bill? No, we do not have. At the moment, uh, <clears throat> there is the, um, a draft policy in place and it's accompanying bill, which we have been told as far back as 2013. 
In fact, the then president, Mahama, indicated to us that by 2014, uh, government was going to assent to this national policy, and then the accompanying bill will go to parliament. But as I speak to you, the draft policy, we've been told, is at um, cabinet after we've gone around the whole country two or three times running sensitization, stakeholder meetings and all. We are told that it's still at cabinet, and we are hoping that this cabinet uh, will actually give, um, you know, validate it. And then the accompanying bill will be sent to parliament so that we can have a national policy come, uh, an OSH bill, which will regulate the, the, the system, regulate the environment. And no, it will bring a lot of sanity into the system. Because as it stands, uh, there is chaos. The theme for ILO for this year's uh, World Day of, for Safety at, at the workplace was um, optimizing the collection of um, optimizing the collection and use of data, OSH data, OSH data, and to the extent that we have several bodies, players in the in the realm, all collecting their own data, radiation protection, factories inspectorate collecting its own, plant protection services department collecting its own, and all that. It's difficult to you know harmonize all of these reports, data, and present to the ILO. So with the passing of the policy, if it is passed, we shall have all these things unifying, and the system will be sanitized. We'll have more credible data for policy planning and implementation purposes. All right. So what is your message for Parliament? Well, well um, as far as the, the bill has not reached Parliament, I am not well versed in parliamentary processes. But what I know now is that the policy is at cabinet level, and we want to urge um, Nan President Nanado to do well to focus some attention on it. Tomorrow is World Labor Day. We'll be celebrating it in Ghana. I uh, want to see that on this day. It will be great to hear that finally the policy for occupational safety and health has been passed by cabinet and then we can now look forward to parliament also doing their bit on the accompanying bill right uh, we're grateful for your time thank you very much uh, for joining us on skype Nanea Akwada is thank the executive much, director for the bureau of public safety and i'm stephen and you're watching news at 10 we have more news for you please stay Welcome back. Now, the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana has released its post-2016 poll uh, survey report. It will be recalled that the department prior to the December 2016 polls conducted a pre-poll survey which showed that the opposition New Patriotic Party will win uh, the polls. Let's engage uh, Dr. Evans agri Darko, who is a lecturer at the Department of Political Science of the University of Ghana. Doc, uh, good evening and thank you extremely yeah, for, evening, for joining us. Thank you very much. So, uh, can you tell us what informed this post poll survey? Um, thank you very much, uh, Steve, and good evening to your uh, viewers. Um, Steve, you see, if you go back and um, look at the uh, Department of Podcast Science, over the years, they, they've actually been doing um, election surveys. Um, we don't go to the field actually to predict who will win or who will lose. Ours is a much more comprehensive approach to things. See, a university must build a body of knowledge for the citizens. Mm -hmm. you know, that is why universities are established, to build a body of knowledge. And really, when you do a, a research, it helps you to really teach better and, and let your you know, teaching reflect you know, the, 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 what you call the empirical situation that is on the ground. We are not just teaching theories, but what you teach also reflects what really is on the ground. So if you go back in time, you realize that they, at least when I was a student, they used to do that. You know, I remember they studied 96 elections. I remember they studied 2000. They studied 2004. Um, and then subsequently, it was, we, it was difficult to secure funding for, for, for the others. 2008, we couldn't really study in a much more you know, comprehensive manner. But 2016, we, we, we found that, you know, there was a free 
uh, <laughs> pre-election survey that was done That's right. uh, to deal with other specifics. I mean, which and which you which you, would do which you predicted which you predicted survey. that the uh, New Patriotic Party was going to win that poll. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, yeah, that's that's what they did. But that was just a bit of the, the the key things that you do. You see, when you do a something of this nature, our major consideration or major motivation, Steve, is to build a body of knowledge. That's first and foremost. And the universities must also be relevant to the the, the, the society within which it, it functions. It's like literally the gown going to town, if you like, and making sure that what we do. Uh, has a bearing on 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 our 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 you know, uh, mm. survival. We are we are looking at party formation. We are looking at party mobilization. We are looking at agenda setting. We are looking at the role of the media, for instance. We are interested in, in even polls who matter at all. We are looking at the voter preferences and so on and so forth. So when we have all these things in place, uh, people who are interested and really will want to craft a political party for themselves, which will be enduring, making references to some of these issues. Don't forget, Steve, our major consideration, and, and some have even argued that they dictate how to rule. So we want the state to be well governed. And if the state will be well governed, then institutions yeah. of state must be firing on all cylinders, must do the right things. Political parties must be there because we think that we are victors. Uh, then, therefore, they, they, they ought to be properly organized. We want parties who are going into an election to know what the issues are and how they put, you know, position themselves to take, you know, uh, right. uh, maybe to even leverage what will be the role of manifestos, for instance, and whether indeed manifestos matter at all and That's what are right. the prevailing circumstances. We want to look at voter preferences and what are some of the things that shapes voters, you know, their behavior and so on. So we are actually interested in all of these. And, and, right. and once you build, continue to build that body of knowledge, it gives us a sense of uh, some trajectories and a pattern that perhaps will emerge. And that will help governance, basically. Yes. Mm. Right. So, uh, Doc, we recall that your uh, pre-poll survey was conducted in seven out of the ten regions. So uh, does it mean that this post-poll survey was also conducted in the same number of uh, uh, regions or constituencies? No, this, this one was, um, we, 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 this one, we extended it. We did it. It was a nationwide. Mm. Uh, we covered about 50 constituencies. Okay. I think the first one, uh, the coverage was 24 constituencies. Mm. Uh, the, the major target or the focus was on 20 regions and of course some other regions which had uh, some interesting uh, uh, characteristics mm -hmm. for instance they came to greater Accra and looked at some aspect of Medina and other areas went to part of water and so on that's why you talked about seven regions right this one we decided it was a nationwide you know coverage but as I said we covered about 50 constituencies all in all uh, so this was so we literally more than doubled the what you did that for the pre seven poll. So, the are you able to share with us? Major consideration is not as to whether who won or who won or who lost, but who we lost. were very much interested in other variables. Uh, you know, for instance, some and we, we, we had thematic areas somewhere interest. I, for instance, looked at um, um, uh, observers and whether observers really matter at all, because there has been in the literature the contention is that. We are maturing as, as a democracy, and therefore we don't really need people to come and observe what we are doing and so on. My, my thesis, major thesis was that when human beings know that they are being observed, they alter their behavior positively. And so observers are critical, especially when it comes to issues of what we call the best practices that exist in our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Doc, so, are you able yes. to share with us uh, some of the key findings of this uh, post-election survey? Yeah, thank you very much. You see, so when you ca come to, let me just take them one after the other. When you look at, let's say, um, 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 election observation, what we realized was that observations are important. And Ghanaians, a good number of people that we interviewed, still insist that observers must be present. Mm -hmm. What we also found critical was the fact that the domestic observer group, especially Cordillo, is gaining a lot of prominence among our people. What it means is that we must continue to build capacity 
you know, along those lines. And then, of course, the act entered by the external actors. You know, these external actors also add some level of integrity to our election. And they, especially when they give our, our processes a bill of health, it really adds to the credibility, you know, of, of elections. And then it enhances our own democratic credentials as, as an emerging, right. if you like, a, a country that is seeking to consolidate. That was a major finding in that area, for instance. Now, when you come to uh, media, we well, the media played a critical role. And uh, sometimes, in some cases, it shaped even the voter choices of some of the individuals. What it means is that you cannot disregard the media and, 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 and hope to survive if you are a serious political party. That is one thing that right. you know, identified. Right. Of Doctor, course, the major consideration. Right. What, what about political ideology? What about political ideology in in the research? Did that that come up? Was it a factor in the poll? We 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 were not particularly interested in ideology per se, but we're looking at party mobilization and 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 voter choices and voter perception and how people who indeed you know really motivated select it or right. Uh, select it. See right. what we found out in this particular area was that. Party affiliation was very critical, and people were, had very strong attachment to parties. We even realized that parties were even more important than individuals, and therefore there was a tendency for human beings who decided to cross carpet for people to in, in, literally reject them. Like you know, like uh, uh, when the anointing deserts you, you literally will lose your followers. It's like so. So we, we realized that parties. Uh, especially the traditions are critical in in in, in that that, right. that that respect. We also looked at uh, the EC, the, the election management body, and their activities and so on. Um, of course, as I said, we, we we looked at how you know the strategies that parties ought to use in in of course uh, in in mobilizing supporters and so on to go and vote for them. And then one major issue that also came up, a thematic area that we looked at. As it was those who won and those who lost, and what are some of the variables uh, that accounted for this particular outcome that that we experienced? And number of issues came up, and that particular uh, thematic area was handled by one of our, our colleagues, uh, H. Riffin Pong. I mean, his analysis indicated that uh, voters were were seriously dissatisfied with with the style of governance of, of the previous previous administration. Of course, a number of internal and external variables. Corruption was key. public posturing of some of the functionary was fundamental. The leadership strategy, leadership style was there. Uh, some felt that they, they, they had not been uh, uh, fairly treated. Of course, issues of uh, unemployment and uh, issues of uh, uh, the fact that some other individuals felt that uh, they have not they had not played a critical role in the scheme of things of government also played a critical role. Others even right. had argued that uh, some functionaries within the party uh, who played critical roles in the past had been sidelined. Right. Interestingly, Steve, there were a number of external variables that the respondents uh, 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 you know, pointed to as accounting for appearance and their preference for uh, the current Right. You know, uh, Dr. Evans, for instance, they were very much interested in, in, in the type of relationship that has always existed, especially under the Fourth Republic. The relationship that has existed between the U.S. and Ghana, for instance, and there seems to be some some consistency. You realize that any time that the Democratic Party has won, uh, the NDC has won, and any time Republican Party has won, the MPP has won. For whatever right. reason, I mean, we don't. Know that. People thought that that also had some effect. If you remember, before when 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 uh, Trump won. I mean, b before Trump won, uh, the general consensus, because even the pools and everything, I mean, political scientists had all argued those days, I mean, the U.S., that uh, uh, it was going to be right, almost uh, like a Dr. fair Evans, for, for, for uh, Hillary. Doc, we are grateful and, for and time. The NBC uh, was very much, very much happy uh, that the, 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 the Hillary was actually in the leader. Right, uh, Dr. Evans Agridako, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Agridako is a lecturer at the Department of Political Science of the University of Ghana. Now, away from that, Supreme Court Judge Justice Jones Doche has asked trial judges uh, to be 
resolute, fair and firm in applying all relevant laws to curb the menace of illegal mining activities. He noted the judiciary institution has the right to protect the environment just as they protect the rights of citizens. The Supreme Court judge made the statement at the commissioning of the Enyinem Circuit Court in the Atiwa district of the Eastern Region. The Circuit Court building was provided by the chiefs and people of the area at a request to the Chief Justice to aid justice delivery system in the area. Enyinem and other several communities in the Eastern Region have been affected by illegal mining activities. This menace, the Supreme Court judge said, judges must help curb. On issues of remand cases, Justice Doche said cases must be determined on merits. He asked staff to exhibit high level of professionalism in the discharge of their duties. The presence of the circuit court at Ejinam should not be a license to engage in unbridled and time-wasting litigation. Let us use the court for very serious matters that need adjudication. The Etiwa District Coordinating Director Stella Wusu Eduami uh, said it was necessary all stakeholders play their roles effectively to assist the court to exercise its constitutional mandate without fear or favor for an effective legal system. And that's how we draw the curtains for news at 10. I'm Stephen Ante. Please enjoy the rest of our programs. There is more news at 3news.com. On behalf of the crew here, good night and a happy May Day in advance for all of uh, the workers in Ghana. Good night.